the little rascal family has just gotten even bigger. This rascal GT is the newest member and assembled here in the USA. With tons of customization available, we wanted to provide you a kit to get your cruiser up and running even faster. What's up race team? This is Taylor at Go Power Sports and this is the Rascal GT Cruiser. In this kit, you have everything you need to make this mini bike a complete roller. Come up with an engine and a drivetrain and you are ready to roll. Now let's get back to the shop and get this thing ready. So this is everything you get in the Rascal GT Cruiser kit. This is the Rascal GT frame and fork. The seat, there's two different options on the seat. You can choose the cruiser or the drag seat, which has like a dovetail and then it's a little bit thinner, you know, lighter weight. Uh, you get the handlebars, which are our 12 inch vintage bars. They have nice sweet back, really comfortable to ride with. You get the hydraulic brake kit this comes on a lot bigger bike so when you put it on these little bikes uh, you get a lot of stopping power you get the sprocket adapter two different sprockets there's a 60 tooth and a 50 tooth so you can really play with your gear ratio just with what comes in the kit uh, you know you get really good top speed with the 50 a lot more takeoff power with the 60. Uh, the complete hardware pack which is pretty minimal and easy because most of the parts in this, like the pegs and risers, come with their own hardware. So laying everything out and getting ready to rock and roll is really easy on this kit. Uh, this is the brake adapter. When you run the big disc on this bike, we gotta raise the caliper a little bit. So that's what that piece is for. Uh, this is the axle bracket. The unitank which bolts right onto the top, super easy. Comes with two different pet cocks for you to choose from. We've got the 10 inch machined aluminum wheels, big brake disc. They run really true, um, just really sweet wheels. So on the tires, there's a few different options. These are the smallest street tire option. If you look at this bike right here, this one has the bigger tires. These are the 410 uh, kind of flat track tires. Rear axle, front axle, kingpin bolt with bushings. You get the kickstand, which the bracket's already on the bike, so installing the kickstand is super easy. Two different throttle cables, which is kind of cool. This is for if you're running a stock engine, and then there's a 52 inch Makuni cable for if you're running like a flat slide or a 22. Throttle, grips, kill switch, valve stems for the wheels, obviously. So first thing I always do when opening up one of these kits, with it you get the packing slip. With every package we send out, you get a packing slip. So I go over every item on here, cross it off as I go, make sure everything is in this kit. And this is what we call a pick to kit item, which is kind of cool, because it literally shows you every single piece you're going to get with this kit. So go over it, make sure it's all there. If it's not, shoot us an email, we'll get you set up. So this is all of the hardware that you need. You've got, you pretty much need a full wrench set, Allens, a few sockets, hammer, some sort of file or beveling tool. You need some cutters, a punch is always handy. Phillips head screwdriver, a ruler, that was just to measure your spacers to make sure you're putting them in the right spot. Valve puller tool. Uh, you can use pliers, but it's really easy with one of these. You can pick them up from any auto parts store. Half inch drill bit, quarter inch drill bit, impact and drill. All right, so first thing we're going to do is get our tires mounted onto the wheels. We're going to leave the hubs in there and luckily we have this vise right here if you don't have a vise at home um, if you can clamp the wheels into something it definitely makes this process a lot easier so i get just like an old axle bolt in here valve stem up put it just like that 
So at our warehouse, we have what's called slip tack. If you have that, that's the easiest way to mount a tire as far as the lubrication. But if you have just soapy water, that works just fine too. So you want to get it everywhere. These can be kind of tricky to mount all along the outside, the inside. I like to get some all on the wheel too. And right here on the top lip where you're gonna be pushing it down. So the front wheel doesn't really matter which way you put the tire on. You'll just have to move the spacers accordingly because they there are two different lengths. I usually do it where the brake boss is going to be on the right side of the bike. So that would put it on the left. It's exactly why it's good to like plan and visualize your build before you just start <laughs> slipping stuff on and realizing it's backwards. <laughs> so that was way easier than the 410 flat track tires. Those are a really thick, hard sidewall. But that was the easy part. <laughs> I was at a part where I thought it was pretty much stuck, but the bottom of the tire was still down here where it's gonna sit like when you air it up. So I lifted it, got it down into the middle of the wheel and it gave me, I mean, you saw how easy that pushed on. Piece of cake. So you can just use pliers grab onto these and pull them through. At first, when it's seating, I always put quite a bit of air in there. And by the time you're done assembling the bike, you know, then set your air pressure. But let the tire kind of seat on the bead while you're building. I always check the valve stem for a leak. So if you don't see any bubbles, you know your valve stem's good. I hate scratching these brake discs because they look so good. Make sure you got a rag protecting the whole bottom side of the disc. I'm gonna show you one more thing on the tires and wheels. So these do not come, you know, these are just installed for shipping purposes. They are not tight. See how easy I'm busting those loose? Like I'm not even trying. Yeah. So some guys use like flat washers and lock washers, or you can just use a tiny bit of Loctite. I like to put something on them just because if you're flat tracking, if you're putting a lot of side pressure on them, going fast, you do not want these coming out. I feel like that's just a good habit to have whenever you order anything from anywhere, to just go over bolts and make sure that, you know, they didn't get loose in shipping. I always do. Yeah. Okay. Rear is good to go. Next up, we are going to install the front forks onto the neck. So to do that, we need the neck bolt. This is the neck bolt, nut, washers for spacing if needed, and the bushings. First thing I do before I start to hammer those in, take some sort of file or chamfering tool I like to make sure these are tapered just a little bit and that you don't have any lip on the inside. It's going to prevent the bushing from going in. I always use an old neck bolt that I have laying around, but you can use the one that comes in the kit to do this. I always hold the bottom one in place just to keep the bolt centered. I 
after I get it started, I like to uh, chuck up on a half inch drill bit, lightly run it through. Okay, and get this bottom one started. Nice and smooth. Washer on the top. Always hold it up here and see how much room you have. That's perfect. So we're gonna get one washer right here. A washer and nut on the bottom. That is a half inch bolt, so you're gonna use two three quarter inch wrenches. I go till it's tight and then loosen it from there. You don't wanna feel any drag in this. If you feel drag right here, you're gonna feel that when you're cornering. They will loosen up a little as you ride. You want it nice and smooth. Next up, we're going to put in the front wheel, front axle spacers. Bust open this hardware kit. Uh, flat black tube plugs. These are the sprocket carrier bolts, seat bolts. Wheel spacers brake bolts with the brake spacers. 5 16 18 bolts and nuts. These are for the brake adapter and the rear axle shims. So these are the plugs. I'm gonna put these in up here and then in the back. Okay, front axle, that's gonna be the shorter of the two. These are both 12 millimeter axle bolts and nuts. So in this kit, you obviously have four different wheel spacers. Here is a list of them. So, now the front, like I said, you can put the tire on the wheel however you want. You just have to put the spacers accordingly. Front right is if you do the brake boss on the right side, like I'm about to show you. Let's slap this wheel in there. So front, right, that is going from behind the bike, like you're sitting on it, right side. Fourteen on the head of the bolt, seventeen mil on the nut. Perfect. All right, front is done. You can see how easy that was. Let's move on to the rear. So you've got the axle brackets, 12 mil axle brackets. Shouts out for the, to the warehouse for uh, labeling and packing. Everything's labeled, everything's kitted perfectly. This is really a sweet kit. So I'm just gonna bolt on one side. So these are flanged serrated nuts. A lot of times you don't even have to hold a wrench on the nut because it'll bite in. Okay, one side is down. Rear axle and rear axle shims. Spacers. What sprocket you want to go with, Bernie? So we have a 50 on that other one over there with the flat track tires. That thing is fast, top speed. I'm gonna do the 60 on this one. So with the slightly shorter tires and the 62, 
thing should take off really nice. These are the sprocket carrier bolts. These are quarter 28 sprocket carrier. So you got two hole patterns on here. There's the four hole and the three hole. We're gonna use the three hole. And remember, if you didn't already check these bolts, make sure those are tight now because you cannot get to them after you put this on there. These are the three eight millimeter bolts. And the sprocket, on all these split sprockets, you should always be able to match up the number. These are gonna be a 7 16 head. I like to always push on one side. There's a tiny bit of play in these. So try to get your sprocket as lined up as possible. I have this in the lowest setting. Yeah, I was gonna ask if you, this is something you should worry about over torquing? Yes, because you're threading into a billet aluminum carrier. So you can strip out those threads. You might use a wrench. If you don't have an adjustable impact, definitely use a wrench. Yeah, this thing's gonna be torquey, dude. Yeah, it's huge. <laughs> Especially with the shorter of the three tire options. It looks good. Okay, here is the tricky part to explain, but it's also what is beautiful about this bike. Having the one hanger on allows us to really dial in the spacers and it makes it real easy to assemble this whole rear end. So we have the rear right and the rear left. So what I like to do is put in the rear left. So I have my spacers here. Always check and make sure the inside is clean and ready to go. Sometimes you'll have a little burr in there. So always check them on the axle. So I have my rear left, left side of the bike. You put it kind of up into the recess on that wheel. And I like to use a Sharpie to get the crush sleeve centered as much as you can. So I'm gonna put this in here just to hang the wheel. So spacer's loose. Push it all the way up against that left side. Now we're gonna measure for center. We need roughly two washers on this side. Well, maybe one. Let's start with one. So start the axle bolt, put on one shim washer, and do the spacer again. Two inch fifty thousandths. Two inch fifty thousandths. That's pretty good. I'm happy with that. It looks centered. So now on this side, put on the right rear and then eyeball the rest of the spacers. Let's see, Dude, that, that mounting works. is game changer. Like to be able to put the spacers right through. <laughs> it makes it so much easier, dude. You can really dial these in. So originally we had the rear spacers longer where it was just the spacers, but I mounted it in a ton of different bikes and realized that to get the wheel perfect in every single bike, if you're picky like I am, it's best to undersize the spacers, add the shims, and you can really dial these in. So let's get these tight. Axle nut. This is an 18 millimeter. And then the other side is a 19 or three quarter. I'm gonna use a three quarter because we already used it for the neck bolt.
So I'm gonna set the seat up here. We're gonna mark our holes since nothing's in the way. I'm gonna mark the holes, drill it, get it ready to mount, and then we'll put everything else on the bike. We'll mount the seat last. Take your time doing this. It kills me when I mount a seat and it's off, even just like a little bit. Every time I look at the bike, that's all I can see is the seat is off. Actually, let's leave that there. We're gonna get real particular right now. Let's get the unit tank on. Then we can make sure we take up all the gap. I usually like to get the unit tank on. Then you can shove the seat into it quite hard to take up as much of that gap as possible. Gives you a little bit better lines from the side. This comes with six bolts and six lock washers for the six holes. I usually just do on this bike the two or the four outside points. I'm gonna go with this pet cock. Two different ones. This is the plastic with the filter and the on off. This is the metal push in. So if you use this one, you'll need to run an inline fuel filter and a shutoff valve if you're running like a Makuni that doesn't have a shutoff. For those of you who want a pretty unit tank, this looks so good. Uh, I love this. I'm going to go right back here. I'm going to use that same little tooling mark. Clean up the edges. And make sure the little bits of plastic out of your tank. Pop that in. Most time you need just like a tiny bit of oil on it. All the way in. You start them loosely by hand. Leave everything loose. quarter inch drill bit. Take your time on this too. Turn. I feel like we've done this a hundred times on camera. Oh yeah. At least. I take one of them. Go ahead and make your threads. The seat is ready to go. We're gonna set it to the side. On to the risers and handlebars. Handlebars, these are 12 inch vintage. Nice pullback, really a comfortable feel when you're cruising. 60-61 billet risers. These are silver anodized, always a nice piece. So these come with two different length mounting bolts, which comes into play depending on the thickness of your triples. These are thin, so we're gonna go with the shorter two bolts. The bottom hole is offset, so you can really play with that to see what's more comfortable to you. I usually put the offset towards the back, pushing the bars forward. And use this middle hole. These are an eight mil head. So these are 10 mil stainless steel bolts, stainless steel lock washer, stainless steel flat washer. Pretty nice hardware with this kit. Do not get these all the way tight. I just snug them up. We'll do our final tightening after we get the uh, handlebars on there. If you want them tight enough 
to where they both stay flat when you put your bars on. Basically lightly bottom out the bolt. You still have wiggle room. This is a six millimeter Allen for these eight mil bolts. The tricky part, depending on how particular you are, is getting the handlebars centered to the forks. Billet foot pegs. These are foldable, which is pretty nice when you're just rolling it around, transporting it, storing it. With these, you get eight millimeter stainless bolts, lock washers, and flat washers. You can put these pegs anywhere you want on this bike. Since this is a cruiser, most of the time you would choose one of these. Um, I've been going in this hole and it works out really comfortable, but that's something you can play with. You can move them around. It's going to affect how it handles, it's going to affect how comfortable you are throughout the ride. That's what's so perfect about this frame, it's so modular in what you can do. Very much so. I always like to get the flat lined up with the flat of the bracket as much as you can. Next up, we're going to install the chain roller and the kickstand. Chain roller first. So for these tires, this slot works really well. If you're running really, really tall, wide tires, you might need to bring the roller up to one of these holes. When I was running the flat track tires, I didn't like quite how close this got to the tire, so I had it in this hole. So then it's more just like a chain guide and you tighten your chain with the engine slots. So this one, let's go right here. So I'm gonna start with one washer, the spacer, and then just kinda eyeball down your sprocket. It looks like we're just gonna do the spacer itself. That gets it perfect. Depending on how you shim your wheel, depending on if you are if you uh, are lining up to a torque converter or a clutch, that's why we added these washers. Space that roller in and out, line it up perfectly with your sprocket. So 13 mil wrench for the nut, 10 mil socket. Now for the kickstand, took out the cotter pin, and now I'm just disassembling it. So I have noticed on some of these, the cotter pin goes right in. On some, you need to cut one side of it off and just use one of the pins. On this one, it's going right in there. And then you just bend it around so it's not gonna come out on you. I always have the opening going towards the back of the bike. Your spring goes on this front tab, like that, make sure it's in the slot. And then, boom. Okay, next up, we're going to do the brake adapter. You're gonna put it on there just so it lines up with the frame on the inside. So for that, we're gonna use our two 5 16 bolts, 5 16 serrated nuts. Next, we're gonna put on our brake caliper. So I got the eight mil by 125 bolts, brake spacers, and the brake system. So the brake caliper has a spacer in between the pads right here. To get that out, you need to compress this and pull this little tab out. 
Now we can get out that spacer. Get that started like so. Let's go ahead and run this through the frame. Slide down the front until you're lined up. Just get the thread started. And you're gonna put in your rear spacer and bolt. The brake will free up on this thick disc as you start to ride it, as your caliper goes in and out. Is this something that can be adjusted to where it's not pointing back? Yeah, if you loosen this too much to twist your hose around, uh, you'll lose all the pressure in your system and you won't have any brakes. So, so I do it very, very carefully. I just barely crack that loose, twist this hose around as I'm keeping the bolt tight, making sure it's tight until it's pointing straight forward. 12 mil wrench, I'm going to oh so carefully bust this loose. And as I'm twisting it around, make sure your bolt head does not move anymore. Or else, you're gonna get a bunch of air in the system. And like I said, no brakes, you'll have to pump them. Piece of cake. Just take your time, pay attention to the ball head. Make sure it's not moving as you're twisting around the hose. So I run the hose out the other end of the bike, up in the triples this way, and onto the handlebars. With the seat out of the way, it makes this really easy to give this a real clean look. To tighten up that master cylinder, you're gonna need an eight millimeter. I usually come all the way out until the lever is flush with the end of the bar. And that looks like an approximate good height. Now these are cast pieces. They don't go crazy. Torquing these down or you will snap that right in half. They're a good fit to the bar, so it doesn't take a lot of pressure to really snug that up. I like to put one up in here as just like a guide. And I never get this zip tie down here super tight. It's more just like a guide to keep it out of sight. Looks pretty good. I'm going to take you some flat face cutters. Get the zip ties nice and flush cut. All right, let's put on the throttle. So like I said, you got two different cable options. This is a for a stock carburetor, stock linkage. You have the real long end. We're going to use the Makuni cable. Stock is fun, but we're go power sports, not go slower sports. So. I know. <laughs> Open up this throttle housing. Take the guide out. So I'm going to run it this guide back in. Make sure you match it up just like that. It won't really go in backwards. Just match it up with the shape. That's your stop. It should hit up against that guide. So I always go till it bottoms out and then back it out just a hair. You don't want the end of your grip or throttle housing riding on the end of the bar. It'll create drag. Always check, make sure you're free. 
adjuster is a 14. Leave all this loose until you are finished hooking up your cable. Then you'll use these to take out any slack. We're gonna run this through here. That zip tie little hanger loop that we created, I'm gonna go through it. That's why you don't tighten it down. Yep. So now, make sure you tighten your tank back up. Kill switch. These are Phillips head screws, toggle on and off, ground, which you will ground on your engine. And then this plugs into every engine that I've seen that we use. If you get confused putting this back on, this little prong goes against the cable. Remember, these are threading into a plastic housing. So just get them snug to where that won't twist on you. And this, I usually follow the throttle cable down. We'll throw some zip ties on there. So from here, it almost looks like just one cable. Good. Okay, last step. Seat. The seat. Now it looks even cleaner. You can barely even see the brake hose. So remember, we had it pushed forward when we marked our holes. So there's a little wiggle room in those mounting holes. So you can still center up your seat. Make sure it's perfect. Looks fantastic. All right, so thank you for watching. This was the Rascal GT. Cruiser. This is the complete roller kit uh, minus engine, clutch, and chain. So from here, you can get a Tillotson engine. Uh, you got a 212, 225. Uh, you can put really whatever small block engine you want on here. Torque converter, clutch, the possibilities are endless. So this kit uh, turned out pretty sweet. We got the unit tank, 10 inch wheels, vintage handlebars, Really an awesome kit. You saw how easy it went together. This, it's a super easy kit to put together. In the description below of this video, we will have a full tool list of exactly everything you need. Any general tool pack will get you going. Uh, also in the description of the product on gopowersports.com, we'll have the full parts list, uh, full tool list, everything you need to get squared away with this Rascal GT Cruiser. Again, thank you for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, and please send us pictures of your builds. We can't wait to see the color schemes on these. We can't wait to see what you guys do with them. So keep us up to date. Hopefully you like the bike and stay tuned for the next video.